Hi, welcome. My name is Nat, if you're new here. And for those of you who aren't new here, you might be wondering, Nat, hasn't it been like a year since you last uploaded? And the answer to that is yes. And the reason for that is... And that was all really something. In the year since I moved, I you might also have noticed I have moved. This is a new apartment. Since I moved in here, I've been focusing a lot of my free time, such as it is, on fixing up my new place, doing a ton of DIYs. The most recent of which is deciding to totally overhaul the boob light in the office. I was looking at that boob light for like a year, and then a month ago, I walked into the office and I was like, that son of a bitch is gonna die today. <laughs> this is an issue that a lot of renters I know struggle with. Not just bad lighting in particular, but specifically this light. This sort of 80s, 90s builder grade flush mount guy with the semi-circle frosted glass shade on it. The simplest solution for this is obviously to just replace the light with a better one, right? And to be honest with you, it's not really all that difficult. It's a little intimidating, but replacing a light is actually functionally not that hard. The issue with my apartment is that I don't actually have access to the breaker box. It's in the business downstairs. So in order to replace the light, I would have to like call up my landlord and get him to calm down here and turn off the breaker and then like have him wait around for an hour while we futz with the... I have bigger fish to fry with this apartment and frankly I would just rather handle this one myself. There's also a lot of people who don't have access to the breaker box, period. There are a lot of sort of in-between hacks that people have come up with for people who want to kind of disguise their boob light but not actually really engage with the wiring at all because they can't or don't want to. So my bedroom was also graced with one of these these beautiful appendages and on that one I actually just took a giant drum shade that I got for five bucks at Value Village and just kind of threw it up on the ceiling with the existing hardware and that's another hack that people have used a lot. It's really easy to do. It takes no time and effort. Problem with that is it's it's open on the bottom. So if you're underneath on the bed looking up right at it like I am now, you can kind of see all the, the ugly boob light -like guts inside. So I still need to figure out a workaround for that, which I will eventually. For this particular fixture, the drum shade situation just didn't really seem to suit the room. But also like, I kind of took it as a personal challenge. So many people deal with this issue. So many people have these lights and they hate them. Why have we, as a society, not been able to come up with a really clean solution. I feel like the world's experts have really not had enough to do in the past two years and they should really get on boob light amelioration is one of their their main priorities. A lot has been made about the reason why the boob light is so prevalent in today's builder grade homes, rental apartments, that sort of thing. But I kind of want to take a minute to talk about why the boob light is such a pain to engineer around. What is it about this light that makes it so annoying to cover up? And I think I narrowed it down to four main qualities. So one is the base. These days, most lights that are marketed as flush mounts, which is the type of light that fits close to the ceiling, you know, the opposite of a pendant light. These days they have these cute little dainty bases that, you know, just cover the hole in the ceiling. They're a few inches wide across. They're almost like really short pendant lights in a way. Not so much with the boob light. The boob light base is large and in charge. They are a foot across most of the time, which means that anything that you put on top of it it basically has to be big enough to cover the entire base of the light. Two is the fact that the sockets go horizontally. So on the vast majority of these lights, there are sockets that sit flush with the base, kind of like this. They point to either side in order to, I guess, illuminate the room maximally. When you look at sort of these cuter designer fixtures that are trendier right now, there's usually one light bulb. It kind of hangs down into the bottom of the light, right? A lot of the time you'll actually be able to see the bulb sort of capitalizing on the Edison bulbs that are so trendy right now. So anything that you use to cover this, it can't feature the bulb sort of coming down in the middle because it doesn't do that. And it also can't block out the light that's coming out from the sides. So number three is the fact that there's a center fastening to the shade. With a lot of flush mounts that are sold nowadays, like schoolhouse style lighting fixtures, they'll suspend the shade of the light from the side so that it can kind of 
hang down and there's nothing in the center of the shade. So you can have like a dome or a little, little bulb shape or one of those cool sort of schoolhousey pyramid looking dues. And it makes for a more streamlined, neater look. The boob light has what's called, I, I promise you, it's called a nipple. Um, the nipple of the boob light, interestingly, is not the center part that screws on that looks like a nipple, like a nipple, you know? A nipple in lighting terminology is actually the name for the, the threaded rod that comes down in the middle of the light that other things would screw on to. And this is the thing that holds your glass dome shade in place. And if you look at a lot of popular lighting designs that are sold right now, you'd be hard pressed to find another one that actually has that center mount because the other way is just so much more, you know, cute and streamlined looking. And the last thing about boob lights that make them a pain to sort of revamp is that the interior is just hideous. You take off the center shade of a boob light and there's just all kinds of like foil and labels and guts in there because obviously it's not meant to be seen, right? There's a big frosted shade that goes over top for a reason. In addition to having something wide enough to cover the base, in an ideal world, you also wouldn't be able to like look up at the bottom of it and see all this schmutz inside. If it's something maybe cylindrical or open at the bottom, it's great because it lets light out and you might be able to find a way to attach it. But if you stand underneath, you're gonna look up and see a big old mess. So the ideal solution for this had to be something that was wide enough to cover the base. It wouldn't obscure the light. It would be able to attach by the center shade and it would cover what was happening underneath from all angles, from the side and from the bottom. So I explored all kinds of options. I went into turbo Google mode. I started looking at all kinds of things that I could potentially use to cover this light or to jerry rig something to cover this light. I've seen people do some really cool lighting hacks with things like baskets, bowls, mostly pendants though. Like it was really difficult to find things that would work for a flush mount like this. You know, I looked at like vintage glass shades, but I had a hard time finding ones that had the center hole drilled in them or were wide enough for a modern boob light fixture. And there were even some potential like trays, flower pots, things like that. And there were some like semi-promising options, but nothing that I wasn't sure was gonna look like, you know, I just, attached a colander to my ceiling or something. Eventually in my Google journey, I found something extremely promising, which is this gizmo called a socket adapter. And it does basically what it sounds like. It's sort of like an extension cord for a light socket. It has one end that screws in to your lighting fixture the way a light bulb would. And then it has a cord and then another sort of open socket on the end that you can screw your light bulb into. So it basically kind of converts any light socket into sort of a pendant light which was really kind of an eye opener for me that this thing even existed. The problem with this was that I couldn't just like slap a cute pendant shade on it because then you'd be able to see like whatever was going on against the ceiling, right? So this wasn't a perfect solution, but it was at least proof of concept, right? That it was possible to like move the bulb on an existing light fixture. Theoretically, if I could design something that could hide the base and then you could thread the wire down through that and have the bulb happen at the bottom, then you would be able to sort of have a functioning fixture while still disguising everything that was going on underneath. I went through a couple like iterations of what that could look like. And eventually I came across the Blonda Blank steel bowls from Ikea, which have successfully been used in a lot of lighting hacks, usually a lot of pendant lights and a lot of table lamps. There was a girl who actually converted them into a dupe for the Panton flower pot table lamp, which I thought was really, really clever. After a couple of bad sketches and design iterations, I came up with a design that would basically have two bowls, one sort of facing the ceiling to hide the base, and then one opening on the bottom with the light bulb sort of dropped down into it, and then wiring that would come up through the fixture and connect into the existing light. And the whole thing would be held on by the existing center pole on the boob light. What you might've noticed about the style of pendant adapter that I showed you earlier is that it's actually kind of beefy. Like it has like a big old plastic thing on one end and a gooseneck sort of cable on it. And if you had to drill a hole through a bowl to accommodate a fixture of that size, you know, you'd be here all year. What I found is that there's actually like smaller, just a component version of that socket adapter with just the guide wires on it, the just the basic two wires that you need to create a lamp. And they're actually sold really commonly as part of LED flush mount light kits. Like if you want recessed can lighting, you can get these little kits to sort of convert your existing like light hole in your ceiling to have a, a can light in it. And I was having a total pain in the ass 
trying to get anyone to just sell me the adapter because this is Canada, the land of retail inconsistencies. But what I did find is that my local Habitat for Humanity actually had like a whole palette of these recessed lighting kits for $5 a pop. So I was able to go down there and grab one. I did take a look around. I didn't see anything else I wanted to have in my home. That's the restore. You win some, you lose some. So for the other end of my fixture, the part that would actually like hold my light bulb, I just grabbed a regular lamp socket from the hardware store, but I made sure to grab one with what's called a hickey on it. So a hickey is actually sort of like a metal prong that sits on the end of your socket like this. Um, it has like a hole in it with threading on it so that you can actually screw it onto your nipple. You can put a hickey on a, on a nipple. So anyway, I made sure to grab one with that piece on it so that we could screw it onto the existing center pole of the boob light whenever it came time to assemble the piece together. So I'm not an electrician. I mean, this may come as a terrific shock to you all. I am not an electrician. I am one idiot on the internet with a song in her heart and too much time on her hands. Even putting this together was a bit of a calculated risk for me. I knew that I wasn't going to be messing with any existing hardwired lighting and the extent of me sort of messing with the existing fixtures wiring was basically the extent of me screwing a light bulb into a socket, right? It's not really any more invasive than that. But to make sure that I was making something that actually wasn't going to be dangerous to use, I did run a couple of tests and get some semi-professional advice from a friend. So first off, I took my new LED lighting kit situation that I bought from the Habitat and just kind of screwed the whole thing into a lamp that I just had lying around just to see if it worked as intended. Kat, could you, could you give me a hand here? It's not gonna kill me, is it? Uh, highly unlikely. Yeah. Ah! So at that point, I figured it was time to actually test my two lighting components, the socket adapter and the new socket together. I took my LED light kit apart by separating the light end from the socket end. They had these orange clip things that they used to connect the wiring from the LED light and the socket together. Uh, I actually took those apart just by using a nail to bend back the little metal clip inside the orange end piece that held the wire ends and kind of shimmied the wires out. So I took my lamp socket and I took my adapter. I connected the two black wires by straightening out the ends, kind of shimmying them inside a wire cap and then twisting the wire cap securely to make sure it was all held in place. Then I did the same with the white wires. So then to make sure that I wasn't about to cause a rolling blackout, I sent photos of my entire contraption and my components and my plans to my friend Andrew, who is a apprentice electrician, who basically told me that I was very likely in the clear. He did suggest that I test my finished product on something like a surge protector or a GFCI outlet, which are those outlets with the little breaker switches built into them. So that first test passed with flying colors. And then at that point, there was nothing else to do but test it in the ceiling. Ah. And we were in business. So since I had like proof that the technical part of my plan was probably going to work out, I felt pretty good about taking a drill to my bowls and actually starting the housing construction process. So I got the 14 inch bowl for the top since that was big enough to actually cover the base of my boob light. I also got the eight inch one to be the bottom part of the fixture. I also had to stop like right after I started drilling and go buy real metal drill bits because all I did was just dull the crap out of the one I was using. So like right tools for the job, remember that. Don't be a hero, buy metal drill bits. So after a couple days and a brief interlude in which I had to retrieve my Home Depot package from some random guy's house, I was able to actually start drilling my holes. So I marked out as close to the center as I possibly could on both bowls. I put down a piece of scrap wood and then I started with a small bit, working my way up to the biggest bit, which was a half inch. I took a lot of breaks to vacuum up any little metal bits that might have been left behind by the drilling process. It would probably also be smart to use eye and mouth protection as you do this just to be on the safe side. I did find that my drill started to kind of catch on the bowls, especially toward the end, probably because my drill is not very high quality. Like it's the Ikea drill and it's probably not meant to go through anything harder than particle board. So just be careful, uh, hold your drill securely and try to avoid any sort of slippage that could happen. I actually ended up re-drilling my holes slightly bigger later on 
just to give it a little bit of extra slack to make sure that the center nipple and the wires could fit through with enough sort of room to move around. So my light fixture had a 1.8 nipple, which is actually one of the two sort of main sizes of lamp components you'll find. It's either 1.8 or 1.4, and I bought other 1.8 size parts just to make sure it was all consistent, but your fixture might be different. So at this point, I was ready to start applying 9,000 coats of white gloss paint to my bowls. So I did the inside and outside of the smaller bowl since you were gonna be able to see both the outside and the inside. And for the bigger one, I just did the outside since you were never gonna see the inside since it would be up against the ceiling. I went back and forth on whether I wanted to do like matte black, maybe a gloss olive green, but I went with gloss white in the end just because A, everything else in this room was white and I figured consistency would be good, especially in a room that was so cluttered. B White's easy to paint over, so if I really hated it, I could just go over it with something else later. Now here's what you're gonna do. This is not what I did. Uh, this is what you're gonna do because this is what I should have done. Sand your bowls before you start so that the paint can adhere better and ideally use a primer as well. I got cocky and thought because I splashed out on like the pro grade gloss enamel spray paint that it would just do my job for me. And the finish turned out actually pretty good, but the problem was every time I kind of rotated or moved the bowls to spray at a different angle, I would inevitably get the paint stuck on something or there'll be a little ding or a nick and I'd have to sand it and fix it. I also got a little bit overzealous in parts while I was doing my smooth, light, even coats that you're supposed to do and the paint would like pool a tiny bit and I'd have to fix that too. So prime your stuff, be patient, don't be like me. In the end, it still turned out well, but like it was more of a fight than it probably should have been. I also took a moment to paint the socket because I knew it would be probably visible inside the fixture and I just kind of wanted everything to be consistent. So you may want to do that too. So things have been pretty smooth sailing so far, but this was the point where I hit my first major snag in this process. So I had bought No More Nails construction adhesive to hold my bowls together. I wanted them to be glued together at the base just to kind of make sure they weren't slipping and sliding all over the place and they sat nice and flush with each other when the unit was on the ceiling. And No More Nails has this kind of gloopy toothpaste consistency to it. And what I realized when I was assembling the bowls is that the bottoms of the Ikea bowls aren't perfectly flush. They're not perfectly flat. When I put them together, there was a little bit of like a, like a, like a hollow gap in the middle. And so they actually really only met kind of at the edges of where each bowl went flat, like kind of like this. In the interest of making sure that everything like bonded really well, I kind of spread the glue all the way out to the edges of where the bowls met. And then when I pushed them together, the glue kind of like leaked out onto the sides and it got kind of gloopy and really visible. It was a lot less seamless than I wanted it to be. And so I tried all kinds of stuff to clean it up. I tried removing the excess, but I just kind of smeared it more. I tried putting in more glue with like a barbecue skewer, trying to just get a nice seam. I thought about caulking it, but it was such a tight angle, I couldn't really get in there. And then eventually as I was like shifting it around, trying to get it to work, like to add insult to injury, the whole thing just fell apart because it was less than the 24 hour curing time of this glue. And so I was left with these two bowls that were painted, but they just had like big old crusty glue gunk. And I actually thought about like throwing them out and starting the whole thing over again with new bowls. And I didn't do that because I'm cheap. And also because I was actually pretty happy with how they were looking for the most part. I'd gone to the effort of painting them. The paint looked pretty good. I was like, okay, we can probably save this. I basically decided to try again after cleaning off all the bowls, scraping off all of the gunk, sanding everything down, giving them a nice new coat of paint, is I decided to use epoxy, which I already had from another project. It's sort of more of a, a thinner, clear, super glue consistency. Mix a little bit of that together, spread it on just enough to sort of get to the edges. And I got a way cleaner result out of that. And I would probably suggest using that kind of a glue for this project if you were to replicate it versus something that's kind of goopier and thicker. You don't really need it. So with the lampshade assembled, it was time to get to the really exciting part, which was the install. So my first step was to take apart my lighting contraption, the socket and the socket adapter connected. Uh, take them apart and then reassemble it, but with the wires coming through the hole of the fixture itself. And I took extra care to check my wire caps for security as my to be electrician friend Andrew recommended. You really, you don't want this coming apart while you're putting it together. So I made sure to give them a little, little extra tug for safety. And I also made sure that my extending hardware was on. So the center nipple 
of the fixture wasn't quite long enough to accommodate everything that I was putting on it. Like if I were to put my fixture against the ceiling, it wouldn't come down far enough to go through the center hole. So what I needed to do was put something on to just make it longer. I could have just bought a whole new nipple and taken it out and screwed the new one in, but honestly, I didn't want to mess too much with what was already there. So I got a female to female connector with one eight threads on both ends. And I also got a whole package of just short nipples that came in a multi-pack at the store. And I think I ended up using maybe like a like a one and a half inch or a two inch piece. So I took out the one remaining bulb that was already in the ceiling and I made sure that the light was off. You don't want that to be on while you're doing this. And then I called in a buddy, specifically my husband, Will. <laughs> making his debut on the channel. So I started by kind of holding the fixture part way up and then screwing in the adapter side into the existing socket first because there was like no way that we could really access that once the fixture was up against the ceiling because it would all be covered so did that first and then from there my plan was that i would be able to take the socket with the hickey on it and then twist that onto the nipple and then that would hold the entire fixture in place the problem was with the wires so lamp wires aren't really like floppy little weak guys. They have a fair bit of bend to them. There was enough length of wire running through there that if I tried to sort of get a good twist going, the wires being there meant that they would just kind of, er, there was so much wire in the way that it would just kind of softly twist back. My plan to get this sort of socket screwed up high enough and get it like onto the nipple far enough that it would sort of hold everything to the ceiling, it didn't really work out. Like I could get the socket on and it would stay there, but this was not going to be able to get far up enough into the bowl that it was going to hold everything high up enough to where I wanted it to be, where the bowls would be like nice and flush with the ceiling. No way that's going to work. No. Sort of. Yeah, because you obviously want this like pressed up against the hole to secure it, right? Yeah. Yeah, there's no way you're going to get that with these cables attached. So you need that nut. <laughs> you need that nut. So we decided we needed a washer. The good thing is that most boob lights will already have a washer that screws on to the center nipple inside somewhere as just like part of the existing like shade assembly, right? I had one handy for this boob light. Problem was that I had spent all morning like fidgeting with it and all of my various components. And the second that I needed to use it, it was nowhere to be seen. I literally just had it. Where the fuck is my nut? Okay, well, that's cool. Is it in the pocket or something? No, I like it. And you know I'm gonna find it later and last for like a year. While my long suffering husband stood there holding this thing up in the air, I ran to the next room, which is this room, and took the drum shade that I had put up on the ceiling down because it's the same light. And then ran back in there and like screwed it up while he was holding it. The good part about all this is that Will's job is actually a boom op for TV and film. So his whole thing is holding heavy things up in the air for long periods of time. So we finally got the washer on and it was able to actually hold up the ceiling light. How's it doing? It's getting pretty close to fully threaded. Good. And we were able to attach the socket on like semi-securely. It wasn't quite as tight as I wanted it to be, but we got it to stay in place. It's on the ceiling. Ceiling. Don't touch it. <laughs> the inside of the light, I have to admit, wasn't exactly sitting perfectly the way that I wanted it to. So there's the washer up in there, and that's what's holding up the actual fixture. And then we also have the wires poking through. Um, I add a little bit of electrical tape just to make sure nothing gets nudged over. And then we have the hickey on the socket screwed onto the center pole there, and that's what's holding up the socket. On the upside, it was all holding well. It was all staying up there. It looked good from the side. I had to kind of step away and just stop messing with it. So my adapter was installed and my shade was secured on the ceiling and my bulb was in place. And there was only one thing left to do at that point. Three, two, one. <laughs> Yo! Wow, I did that. So to kind of rectify the fact that the interior wasn't looking quite as finished as I wanted it to, 
First of all, I put a little bit of electrical tape around the nipple and the wires just to kind of hold everything there. I made sure everything was nice and tight in terms of the washer and in terms of the socket hickey. And then I just kind of take it one step further. I went back to the lighting department at Home Depot for the 58th time in the past two weeks. I got this sort of cylindrical white tubing, which is actually used in, I guess, pendant lights for a similar purpose to kind of hide lengths of cable or pole or whatever else. And I cut a slit into it and then I wrapped it around the center pole of the light. In the end, all you can really see inside is just a little length of kind of white tube, the socket, and that's basically it. I also got a slightly more decorative bulb just because you could actually see more of the base of the bulb in this light than I originally anticipated. So I just wanted something that was like clean glass all the way down to the base. And that's it. And I have to say, for my first time designing anything lighting related from scratch, I'm really proud of how this project came out. Like I can't tell you how many times I've walked through the apartment on the way to and from the kitchen or to and from the bedroom and looked up at the ceiling in the office and been like, yeah. Yeah, I, I made that. I think it suits the room really well. It's a statement without being like crazy flashy. I think it's an efficient use of what was already there. And I think it's an efficient disguise of what was already there, which really is the main reason we're all here. It also has those mid-century flush mount vibes I was really hoping for. Given the severe jank of what I was working with, I, I, think, it's a, I think it's an accomplishment. I do wish that the actual install was a little bit of a cleaner process. As much as I'd thought through the engineering of how the light would all kind of fit together, I do kind of wish it hadn't been sort of a like, well, if it's sitting on the ceiling, then it's fine situation at the end, you know? But I do feel like I could probably go back at some point and kind of find some way to refine the engineering a little bit more, whether that's finding a different way to thread the wires through so they don't interfere as much. I'm not really sure, but if you guys have any suggestions, polite suggestions, like please don't scream at me, but like if you have any suggestions, let me know in the comments. I'd really be curious to hear it. So let's talk pricing really quickly. So everything that I used for this project, quick back of the napkin math, not everything that I bought for this project, because like Lord knows, as with any DIY project, there's always a couple times where the thing that you bought is not the correct thing and it just goes into your DIY hoard for future use. Everything that I used for this project probably came out to like $85 Canadian, roughly. You could buy a new light for a lot cheaper than that. You could also buy a new light for a lot more expensive than that. And if I had had that option more readily available to me, maybe I would have just done that. As far as a DIY challenge, as far as re-engineering this terrible, annoying light that so many of us are saddled with, on those counts, I really feel like I succeeded today, so. And I really hope that this gives you guys some ideas on how you can redesign your own cruddy rental lighting and really look at the boob light in a whole new light. A whole new boob light. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. I'm hoping to bring you guys more DIY content, and I'm also just kind of hoping to come back here a little more often and just get a little more done. I'm happy to be back, and I hope you guys are happy to see me too. So take care, stay safe out there. I will see you when I see you.